Now, of course, when, Leah, when Laban gets home, he discovers two things. He discovers, first of all, everybody's gone. My daughters are gone. My grandchildren are gone. My best worker is gone. He also discovered that the idols were gone. So even though Jacob got a head start, Laban and his sons can travel faster than Jacob because Jacob has women with him and the women have children with them. So Jacob cannot move that fast. So in seven days, Laban catches them in the hill country of Gilead. And on the way, God, look at Genesis 20, Genesis 31, 24. On the way, God speaks to Laban. And he says something very strange, something that's really hard to understand. He says, when you see Jacob, don't you speak to him for good or evil. Now, why is that strange? Why did he tell him not to speak to him of good? We understand why he said don't say anything evil against him. But he also said don't say anything good either. Why did he say that? You know why I think God said that? Because God didn't want Laban to get the credit for Jacob and his family being able to leave. God didn't want those children to think. God didn't want those wives to think. God didn't want anybody to think. Jacob was able to go back because of Laban. Jacob was not able to go back because of Laban. Laban if Laban had said something good to Jacob, it would have been a lie. It would have been hypocritical. Jacob was able to go back because of God, because of something because of the mercy of God in Jacob's life and in the life of Jacob's family. So Laban is warned. And then when Laban catches Jacob in verse 25, Genesis 31, 25, Laban catches him and he says, Why did you do this to me? Why did you deceive me? Well, for 20 years Laban had been deceiving Jacob. So Laban is really not against deceit. He's just against deceit when he's the victim, when he's the loser. But he protests to Jacob like a righteous man would protest to an unrighteous man and says, why do you treat me this way? I've never treated you badly. Of course he had. He treated him badly for 20 years. He had tried to deceive him for 20 years. But he said, why did you deceive me? What did you do this for? And then in verse 30 he said, why did you steal my gods? Now here's the thing we have to remember. Jacob did not know what Rachel had done. Jacob didn't know that Rachel had the gods with her. Jacob says something very wild and very foolish. He said, um, I did this because I didn't think you would let your daughters go. But let me tell you something. I didn't take your gods. And furthermore, whoever did take your gods, you can kill them right now. If you find your gods, your idols on somebody, you can kill them right now in front of all of us. It won't bother me at all. Well, who did he love the best? He loved Rachel. He had no idea that Rachel had stolen these gods. He may not have even known that Rachel was a false worshiper. Now, there are some scholars who think that the only reason Rachel took the gods was because there was some connection between the, those idols and the claim for the inheritance. Maybe that's true, but we don't know that. I think we have to assume that if Rachel wanted to have those idols, that there was something wrong in her spiritual life, something so wrong that she may have even been a false worshiper. I think we have to assume that. She deceived her husband. She stole from her father. Rachel was not a woman of, of very good morals. 
and Jacob didn't know what he'd done. Now, Rachel's pretty good at tricks, too. She's like her uncle. Uh, she's like her father. She's good at deception and, and tricks. And Laban searched through everyone's possessions, everyone's pack, everyone's tent for those idols, and he couldn't find them because Rachel was sitting on the, the saddle of the camel. And the idols, they must have been very small. They were hidden in the saddle. When her father enters, she asks her father to forgive her for not standing up because she says, it's that time of month when I don't feel very comfortable. So he doesn't make her stand up. So he doesn't look under the place where she's sitting. And she's sitting on the idols. So he doesn't find them. It's an amazing story, an amazing story. It's a terrifying story because Rachel could have been killed. But it's also terrifying because Jacob has fallen in love with a false worshiper. And maybe that's one reason why God blessed Leah. She may have been ugly, or at least uglier than her sister. She may not have been loved by her husband, but maybe she loved God. Maybe she loved God more than her sister. And maybe that's one reason why the blessing came to her. Well, Jacob and Laban have a big fight. Laban says, why are you treating this, me this way? And Jacob says, because you treated me badly for 20 years. That's why. I have a right to treat you any way I want to. You don't deserve my loyalty. And you don't deserve my presence. And finally, Laban admits, well, it is true that God spoke to me about you. And Laban knows that he's got to let them go, but he's still angry. But finally, they make it up and they have a feast. They have a meal. And eating together at this meal means there's going to be peace between us. And they not only have a meal together, but they make a monument. They make a heap of stones as a kind of marker. You know, if you're traveling over borders, sometimes you'll come to a sign or a post and it'll say, you're entering Ukraine, or you're entering Georgia, or you're entering uh, Belarus. And they made a sign, they, they made a, a, a monument um, in verse 45. They build this thing out of stones, and they say, this is a border. This is a place where we made peace. And this is the place where we said goodbye, where we parted. And as we say goodbye, and as we make peace, we're making a promise. Laban, you're never going to come this way and pass this, this monument to do anything bad to me. And I'm never going to come this way and pass this monument to do anything bad to you. In other words, we're not going to go home. Jacob's not going to go home and say, you know, he cheated me. He, he really owes me more money. And so Jacob comes back to, to get what he thinks he deserves from Laban. And Laban's not going to say, you know, he really cheated me. I gave him more than he deserved. And besides, he took my family. He took my whole family away. He took my daughters. He took all my grandchildren. I'm going to go get him. I'm going to go get my family back. They said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to put this monument here. The monument has three names. It's got one name in Aramaic, which was the language of the ancient Near East. This is the first time in the Bible that we hear an Aramaic word, Genesis 31. And it's got two names in Hebrew. Um, one of the names... One of the names in Hebrew is Galeed, and one of the names in Hebrew is Mitzpah. Mitzpah means a witness. We're making this stone as a witness that there's peace between Jacob and Laban. There's not going to be war anymore. And at the end of chapter 31, Laban kisses his daughters, and he kissed his grandchildren, and he told them goodbye. 
and that was it. Now Laban's out of the picture. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.